back, ladies and gentlemen. It's Vitality versus Ends for a third map. But I feel like we've been blessed because the first two were really great. And um, Ends just showing us a masterclass, I believe, on Nuke. And now we're going to go Dust 2 as the third and final map. I'm, How do you like that? I'm I'm actually, well, I like that it's on such a classic map. I always appreciate third maps. I like the classics, Dust 2s, yeah. Infernos. I think that's always really fun. I This map, for the longest time for me, for Ends, has been so sketchy. Like, ever since the London Major that Face yeah. it ran. Like remember, they kept touting that their dust two is fine, and for, for some reason, my brain like hasn't shaken that you know that that fact that we've seen them play it well at times, and we've seen them get you know play it horribly at times as well. But you know, we'll we'll see how this goes. Can't even really find a good reason why they would be you know not good on it, just given the firepower and and the way that this map normally plays out. But um, yeah, you're right. I guess we'll 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 find out. They're all on the server, so we're just waiting for the for the word go, and then we should be uh, getting right into it. You know what I? You know what what struck me in the in the break here? What's that? Do you remember that? Uh, you remember those movies with, with Tommy Lee Jones, U.S. Marshal? I wish yeah, they would have yeah. made more of those. Wasn't that like an unofficial sequel of The Fugitive? Yeah, it probably was. I'm pretty sure that was like. Right, I kind of want to see more. Same of them. character, but not. Yeah. A sequel in some way. Yeah, maybe they didn't get the rights to it or something. They just made one. Fugitive anyway. was a good one. Also good, yeah. Yeah, if you haven't seen that. It's I like feel classic. like. I feel like it suddenly dawned on me that we need more of those. But obviously now it might be a little bit late. Tommy Lee Jones is great, man. Yeah, he, really really is. he was always underrated. Yeah, I think I think you're right. It just it was in my head. And now I had to say it out loud. He was a great two face. Yeah, <laughs> this is that too. Maybe not the best, but yeah, I agree. <laughs> something. something Jim, Jim Carrey was in that flick. Listen, let's not go there. Let's not miss the that. Riddler. Why don't they bring him back? You know what? <laughs> we'll never find out. Knife to decide this, uh, who's going to be starting on what side. It's the way we do it on the third map, of course. So, um, who have you got for this one? Who's going to be winning it? I, Not the knife, really. I am going to go with... Oh, it's so hard. I'm going to go with Ents. Okay. I have a really... I mean, it is a bit crazy picking that Zywoo, I feel, on a map like this. That could be so good for the offers. Especially after we just saw Device dominate with the AWP. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I don't, I don't. I feel like I don't really have a good answer. This this feels very 50-50 to me. Because, I mean, especially because both the first two maps have been very close. Yeah, I mean, if you if you look, use that as your uh, your your argument, some historical evidence, then yeah, it probably is like very close to 50-50. I'm having a hard time getting past Taibu in the way he's been playing. Yeah, he's been good, even on Nuke, like quietly very powerful, quietly very good. Inferno, obviously, he had something like 33, 34 kills. I, th this this will be interesting to watch because we talked about it, we touched on it briefly on Nuke, and we can kind of keep our eye on it uh, throughout this map. Is the exhaustion factor? Events with that travel, with the jet lag, with the, with the crazy schedule, the lack of sleep, and now the last map of the day, it's it's what? It's like 11 p.m. here or something like that? It's 11.15 when this is going live? This has been a very long day for us. It has been a very long day, and you have to hope that um, that they're able to get get themselves mentally fired up, but sure, at some point, even uh, even the energy drinks or the coffee or whatever is going to be running out, right? It almost backfires Yeah, I have when to, you're this tired. It, it you can, know. It can be dangerous. You got to be careful for sure. A P250 pick up an X7 and two smokes. One of them already used down the middle. That's Alu, I think, just trying to make sure that they don't have any information about what's happening on the catwalk. And they're going to be clearing out upper duck, then into lower duck. RPK sees that smoke and wants to use it. Flashed in by a teammate too soon to find anyone. And now they're getting real close to middle. And they have another smoke. Oh, they could be setting it up just for B uh, inside of the CT spawn there. RPK backed away as well, so Apex got the information late. Spamming through, nothing connecting for Apex. Oh, shocks. Oh, you poor, poor guy. You're all alone in this B-bomb set. They're coming from every direction. Good to get one kill. And look at this distraction. Alu attacking Catwalk. If he wins this fight, it's huge. He can have a massive flank, but he's done the damage, and he's going to back away from it. He's got to be careful, but Vitality can largely just ignore him, but they have to be aware of the possibility. A fast retake coming in, and two quick kills. Oh, wow, and down the middle now, Alu, no chance at all. What a turnaround from Vitality. You're absolutely right, Shox was just in a huge amount of trouble, and with a quick bomb plant, that could have been a disastrous round, and somehow they turn it. I really, really like the call from Vitality to just go for that retake. You know Alu isn't there. You know you have kind of, in a, in a way, a man advantage, and it's right after the bomb, perhaps. Ents isn't really properly set up or prepared at the very least for that flashbang and just a bomb rush into the site. Look at this buy. Two scouts, two creeks for Ents. No luck with the shot down the middle, but on this map, it's hard to argue against. You can really, really end up doing a lot of damage. You just with the scouts. 
the interesting thing that Enza is going to encounter eventually is they're going to run out of utility. And then it's just going to be fights. It's going to be these Kriegs, which have the advantage, and the Scouts. And you're just going to have to find some kind of a kill, some kind of a pick that forces a rotation that creates an opening in the defense. But think about how someone like Sergei was playing on Inferno. I mean, some of the shots that he's connecting with. Yeah. You, you wouldn't do too badly betting, uh, betting for that to, to maybe happen in a round like this. I think, yeah, the utility and the time probably are going to be the two the two main factors here. Now, pushing into upper dark, that's super interesting, especially as Ents have got mid control. And now they're clearing out Catwalk as well. Saibu and Apex pushing now. Saibu getting really close to something, but Shocks goes down. A little bit of a flick not connecting, but I don't think they realize Saibu is right behind them. There's nobody in B. Alu's now jumping in right behind Saibu, turning for it. And two big kills with the bomb down. And Sergei saving them for a minute here. He's got to get into the B-bomb side before this boost comes in. Oh, and they slow it down right at the last second. So he does make it. Oh! Bless wow. it all. That's a shot and a half. And Ariel, he was covering up a dark where Apex was trying to take that peek in. And RPK, really not much of a chance. He's going to be going down. What a turnaround for Enz. And that's in spite of the fact that, I mean, the timing in the middle for Saiwoo to be walking in behind them. That could have wrecked the whole round for them right there. Especially the bomb being dropped so far back. This was great. Almost saved the day. He gets tagged there. And that's unfortunate because he loses that next fight. If he doesn't get tagged by Alu on that drop down, he might actually be able to do something with it. Yeah, I agree. Maybe he doesn't lose that next fight. Either way, one to one. Vitality? Some players are invested. Everyone but Zai Wu, who's going to wait for that AWP. No smokes, or excuse me, one smoke on Apex, one flashbang on Alex. So not a whole lot of trickery that's going to come from the utility on this Vitality defense in this round. But that Deagle is singing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he wants it so bad. Little T-Rex arms. Where's the grappling hook <laughs> when you need it? T-Rex arms. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Would be hard for uh, <laughs> would be hard for a T-Rex to try and <laughs> don't think about it, <laughs> don't analyze it, like just like Bruno Mars, we're gonna move just past it. Yeah, that might be for the best. Third round here, still three Deagles in play on the CT side. X7 gonna be checking this side of the map, although someone just snuck their way past. And if he peeks this corner, that could even be dangerous. Shocks is up there at the A-bomb site with a deagle of his own, and we saw him hit three beautiful shots on Nuke to almost win that round. Then he's going to get another chance at it here if they cross without too much of a smoke. Indeed, they just walk into it, and they'll open up with a great duel there for Alu and Sunny. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Actually, not a bad read and not a bad situation for Vitality. They had two players coming in on the flank, but they needed at least one of those deagles to connect. To create a distraction, to just buy time for that flank to be a little more powerful. Uh, yeah. Two to one for Ents, and they should have an easier time of things. Zywoo's going to have an AWP in the next round. They'll have rifles in the next round, but here, this should be a bit of fun. Sunny and X7 dropping down to the MAC-10s, knowing it's going to be a full save. And tapping away with impunity and a challenge in mid, so the Kree can have a really good time. Sergei's love and this push. Well, that was a quick round. That was a very quick round. Thanks to Vitality for not for dragging that out. <laughs> and you know what? Let's get on with this show. Oh, and the show has arrived. Zywoo's AWP. Apex has the AUG. And Alex on the M4. Still the two MAC-10s. I wonder what the quickest Dust 2 round of all time is like. It's got to be a, a version of that, right? It would have to be like a double nade for like a mid-rush. Yeah, that would make sense. Oh, quickly out the middle. So quick, they almost catch uh, Apex falling back into the bomb side. That could have been dangerous. Now they've got the Smith position, but they also got spotted doing that. So maybe that's why they're thinking, you know what? Zaiwoo has such a big job to do. There's no nades for a retake. There's no kit. If they attack Catwalk right at Zaiwoo, he needs to deliver in a big way. Initial nades coming out towards Catwalk. All five players are here for Ents, and the problem is those MAC-10s are not going to be shy about being aggressive with this with this smoke, with a pop flash. Yeah, and it's not like Alex, who's next to him, has anything either. Molotov is raining down all around. He misses the first chance. He's only going to have one more. Does take down X7, and oh my lord, following it up, and Alex also doing his job, and that's a beautiful defense. Saiwu with the triple. When called upon, he definitely answered it. 
And that will be... That'll be a second round for Vitality, and ex I mean, that is, that's what they need out of him on this map. Yeah, that's so critical, especially just in this round when you're trying to establish your money. You don't want to let the T-side ends, and this third map gets such a massive lead. Big, big round for Zywu and Vitality. They can just rebuy. They have all the utility they need now, feeling much better in that situation. They still don't have good money built up behind it, but they can at least breathe a little bit easier this time. RPK getting situated in pit with the help of his teammate. However, they have lost cat control. Aerial at X7. But Apex can gather information in this position until he's forced out. He can hear footsteps, he can hear nade usage. Very dangerous for Apex, waiting in here for a long time, I would say. Not uncommon that people actually throw Molotovs to just sort of, you know, bank them over the, over the wall in the middle here. And with a little bit of follow-up spam, that could be pretty well, pretty lethal. He's not even in the cubby. He could just get straight up spammed as it is. Smoke being dropped to the left. Apex starting to get a little worried about what's coming. Hearing the jump up. There's the gun barrel. Sunny doesn't clear it the whole way. That is going to be so tough to deal with. I don't even think that Molotov is going to spread to him either. And now again, Zaiwu going to be called upon, this time at a different location with Alex inside the site. 40 seconds, setting up a flashbang of his own. Apex actually ready for that jump down for X7. That's pretty smart. It's Alex instead with just the Famas and over at long. A single kill for Saiwu to close the round out. That's three to three tied up for Vitality. And well, still a fair bit of money, in fact, on ends. Kind of surprised. Almost 10,000 on Sergei. Yeah, they're going to buy here. Sergei can drop over an AWP if he wants, which would allow Alu to drop an AK-47 to Aerial. Exactly what's happening. So this is a late decision to buy. They went deep into freeze time before finally making the decision. Shocks now as well picked up an op on the CT side, so double op setup. Saw it on Inferno. Works pretty well. Still plenty of grenades as well on Ents. So they could they could do a lot here. I feel like they've had they've had a lot of rounds where they've been able to get out middle. That just feels like it's so exploitable if you're on the T side and you're actually getting all the way towards CT spawn. I'm almost shocked that they haven't tried to go for many B split, more B splits at this point in time. So okay, that's a big fight to be winning against RPK. You have to know that's going to really soften up the defense. And look at the time. We'll T250 out instead of the AWP. Ready to take the fight close, close range, but... He's not realizing yet. No one's down there. And that is so important to keep him frozen there. There's no way Ents can realize that Zaiwu's the one who is just sitting behind this bin, and he's going to have to spend so much time. If he wants to fall back and help the A bomb site, Ooh. he's also going to be cognizant and worried about the fact that someone can be lurking long. So it's all Alex here on Catwalk. There's no one to help him. Apex barely going to be of assistance. If they hug the wall, he won't have many chances. There's a bit of one there, but Alex... Gets run down, and he's been doing a good job previously defending that bomb side, but this time, just too much alone. And still, you know, lurking on the outside there is Sergei. Just if it comes to a retake, he could even just follow up and, and backstab them. So, yeah, now they call it off instead and say, you know, this is not worth it. And that is definitely the right call. That's great play for Ernst. Not ideal. There's still some things to play out in this round. Zaiwu trying to save the AWP. And as you mentioned, Sergei just waiting. I'm not sure if someone's still at long, so as long as Zaiwu stays in this cave, I think he should be okay. But a tense situation for him as this bomb ticks down. A fourth round for Ents on the board. They take a one-round lead. And the double op setup will be preserved, and plenty of money to drop some guns over to RPK and Alex, who have no money. Yeah, that's important for Vitality, of course, to, to sort of save their own economy here. That's, um... That's kind of curious, again, for Ents. They've had a lot of rounds towards this A bomb site. And like I said, it felt, feels to me like they've been having a lot of success getting out of middle, but they've obviously found something on that side that they like right now that makes them feel like, you know what, it's, it's worth it for us to do that. Obviously, this time, winning one of the fights over at long, you know that A defense is going to be weakened, so maybe that was part of it, but... Now they're pushing out long instead and right into RPK. That maybe could have been a double. Shocks, though. This is not a good position to be in alone with an AWP. You can so easily get zoned out, and that smoke already used. If they have a Molotov, maybe they can even force you up, but they're not really aggressive about it. 
I'm kind of surprised. And look at the kill in Upper Dark there. Yeah, Apex all the way towards key spawn. Now the map shrinks for Ants. They have to be very worried about the kind of information that Apex is able to, able to gather. Shox is able to get away from Car as well. And one more time, it's just allow Alex alone on the A bomb site. This flank from Apex though, he's got to be. Ooh, nice tag from Alu. He's got to be a little bit confused until Alu just shot that. They had no, he had no idea where anyone was. Is Ariel going to clear this angle? Not at all. Free kill for Apex, and he can actually survive. Yeah, he ran a lot of the way there, Apex, which in itself is not without a risk. But as it turns out, he did it perfectly. Out of the range of anyone being able to hear him, he didn't continue to push after the fact. He just waited and said, if they try and fall back, I'll be there as sort of... Alu needs to kill here. Man. That dink hurts. And Molotov forces him out. Now an opportunity for X7, but this needs to speed up. The flank is going to come in in many different ways. X7 has the kill. He's not going to cross. Shock's holding the angle. All tied up once again. And the, the double orb staying alive. Obviously, that's a critical feature of it. And so, able to buy in this round, then I'm guessing they probably will. Yeah, that's some heads up play for Apex. First, obviously, the pushing up a dark, and then the follow up kill there. All tied up. And, oh, they only go for the half buy here on end. Again, another very late call coming out. There was two, mm. two, two players frozen in T-spawn, kind of buying up some pistols right at the end. And might be a situation where the call just doesn't come quick enough, so they decide they just have to half save. That's I mean, obviously, if they had bought, actually, that, that it would prevent the AWP, but I think they could have had AKs on four and then, you know, maybe a scout or something on, on Alu. Still not interested. Now, instead... Waiting for the timing here. They've got the flashbang and some other grenades, smoke and a Molotov there. Oh, and Apex actually reloading as they're pushing through. That might be very bad timing. Important kill for Shocks, but Apex going down and a little bit of risk here. Shocks with a no scope taking down Aerial. That feels different though. There will be a bomb plant happening and it's a four versus three retake. It should be possible here for the French. Sonny, if he can get just one kill in dark. Shock's looking for this. The op is out in his hands. Nothing connects with the Deagle. One AK-47 alive in the bombsite, but the retake getting increasingly more difficult. And instead of going for the flank, which was communicated by Ents, Vitality relocates. All will be coming through the door and the window. But you can see X7. His attention is still on the halls. This is a great, great retake call from Vitality. And they're going to get it done. It's Zai Wu with the P250. And the kit is going to make this defuse just fine. Plenty of time remaining. They take a lead. Wow, that's huge. Cause that, maybe that was the that was sort of the other side of this, right? Vitality, even if they win the round, if, they, if they're down to sort of a two or one man left alive in that retake, that's still pretty great for ends because they know they're going to be buying next round. But the fact that they kept four people alive is such a victory. That looked to me like that round was about to go much worse. I absolutely love that call to give up B-Tunnels after that kill. Yeah. Just go back. Especially with just two players alive. Your attention is just so split as Ents and Alu stuck in an awkward fight, but a big trade for Sunny and Zaiwu is there for the follow-up. Preserving a lead for Vitality and look at Apex. This is madness. Wow, I think if not for the flashbang, he probably wins that fight, but Shox is gonna be there. The other side of that double orb, and that works as well. Three versus two. And Zaiwu at 12 and 3 right now in score, so. Yeah, it's it's outrageous what he could do. It's not like the rest of them are playing badly, but it's just so much strength in one player. Waiting at the right moment here. And Sergei, if he moves forward, you have to assume that he's probably going to be dead. I was waiting for it. Oh, that's a big kill for X7. Oh, but look at Shox. He's draking up the new position as Zaiwu leaves it. Shox is going to see the gun barrel. He's going to see a free kill, and he's going to see the bomb as well. Yeah, that's huge. X7 now. Picking up the bomb and falling back. This is uncomfortable if you're X7. Just two orbs, any false move, and you're dead. Triple for Shocks, who is not playing badly himself at 7 of 4. Two round lead for Vitality, and, and again, Ents having to struggle with the economy. Yeah, they might have to sit around out. Maybe another half buy. Kind of a force up armor, some utility. Try and get into the B bomb site again. That's wild aggression from Vitality. They were trying to do. 
mid pressure from the defensive side. It just doesn't pan out. And look at the call now. They're going to go right back at it. Alex is going to push up mid. Shox is going to be down at Xbox, and it's going to be a B rush. Apex all alone. He's got the AUG. First player gets by. He lines up two. Transfers over. Can't find a third kill, but the teammate, the flashbangs from Shox. The support is so powerful. They've negated the rush. It's just aerial. Good response from Vitality, but that's also by virtue of having so many bodies in middle. That feels so good if you're Shox, doesn't it? Because to you, that's a signal that, oh, they thought I was weak the first time because they got me killed, and now they're going to test me again, and I just come up with a triple. Like, that's when you sort of, I just feel individual like, yeah, yeah. don't try that again, <laughs> you know? Oh, they're going to go for the boost, aren't they? Allo, this could be very dangerous on both sides, in fact. He was looking for it. Did you notice that? Yeah. That first shot he spammed was right where the boost was going to pop in. He was just maybe a quarter of a second, half second too early on it. Even when he came back, he was looking for that boost. Heads up play from Alu. Pushing aggressively on Catwalk with two people, though. On the Vitality side, that's... That's going to be a nice setup, isn't it? I don't know about Alex holding the Molotov, though. That could be really weird. If they get the kill on Saiwu and, and sort of go forward, they might just get both of them in, immediately. But of course, if Saiwu gets the kill instead and Alex throws the Molotov, there's no chasing it. So let's just see. They're right on the edge thinking about it. There's the first grenade. There's the Molotov coming out, and it works brilliantly. Alex, just got to stay away from the fire. Otherwise, some of the brilliance is kind of gone. Apex in the middle has been winning this fight a lot, and that closes the round for sure. Sergey out here goes down to RPK, and now it's an 8-4 lead with Vitality keeping everybody alive, and... Wow, that's... That's a great setup when it plays like that. Uh, you, but you were exactly right. That's on a razor's edge, right? Like, that is... If, if Zaiwu misses that shot, that's that's going to be really tough for him. The flashbang is also bounced instead of popped from, like, lower B. Yeah. Kind of been a, a variety of different ways where a different flashbang is thrown that completely destroys that. And they don't want to test Apex again with these pistols. They say, you know what? He's, he's done it a couple of times, Sunny. Oh, yeah, go for the smoke. You've already made this far into the corner. I guess he wants to wait for the rest of the snake to come up the uh, catwalk here and a little bit of damage being output. Now Sunny's almost made it to the bomb site, but some great counter grenades are also going in towards catwalk and Ariel goes down last. Another round where everybody stays alive. They are rich. Yeah, and I, and they, I think Ents actually just bombed so much utility over towards Long. I, I think they were assuming that Vitality might stick around for that fight. Yeah. With Sunny applying pressure, and they were trying to take advantage of that by going up catwalk, maybe find a four on one at railing or an awkward timing. Oh. It did not work out that way at all. In fact, they went the entire other direction. And if you're Vitality, you're living the dream. Eight of the last nine rounds have gone to your favor. This double op setup has been brutal, and Ents has had not a single response to it. I think even some of those early rounds, they survived with like three members, but then it's like they upgraded over time and just kept getting uh, richer and richer. and. That's a problem now. RPK and Cywood open the bidding shocks as well. They are getting picked apart right now here. The Finnish team not really having any ground to stand on. Shocks finally goes down to Alu, sneaking through the smoke for X7. I mean, that's a, it's a maybe worth doing. And Alex does get dropped, but still a one versus three here. Alu going for the potential ace. Oh, he actually hit that. My that's, God. That was very fast. He's going to jump up towards Catwalk from Molotov, and he's going to get in front of it. No, he's not. I like the idea. I like the idea as well. I mean, if he does, you could tell that Saiwu was, was plainly looking the other way, so yep. he wouldn't have been ready for it. Alu BBQ. I bet they know how to do a good barbecue in Finland, don't you? Every time I see Natsu's stories of him like grilling out and having barbecues, I want to buy a flight to Helsinki. I, he he would welcome it as well. Yeah, he's he built, would be. He's built himself a wonderful home up there. He's got like everything going on. The sauna, the little, little pool outside. It's all amazing. RPK quickly traded there. A lot of people on that corner. And Alex is a Saibu. Can they make the jump past? Oh, no. <laughs> he's not even peeking, is he? No, you can't even shoulder peek this guy. He's, he's zoned in tonight. And not enough utility on the inside to actually take that battle to try and fight for long. That smoke actually denies information from Zaiwu. On the other hand, it might have saved his life on that kind of a cross. Op at the B bomb site, op in middle on shocks. Zaiwu is what used to happen when you put the pod box on like max difficulty in 1.6 and it wasn't even worth playing. Except the pod bots had shotguns. <laughs> yeah, well, let's see what happens if we give one to Zaiwu and still hitting headshots long range. 
Alex ducking for that. Back with a bit of a distraction. Ooh, shock's gonna get caught and Sunny. That's a beautiful entry. Double headshot. And it's time we win a one versus three. For the last round of the half here. Surely there is still justice and you know reason left in the in the universe. I hope not. Let's go, Zawu. Here we are. One Molotov, one flashbang to his name. He's also got a kit. No reason to take your time with this. It doesn't matter if they know where you are, just because you have to speed up the process. With three kills to find. And Ensa is playing this perfectly. Nobody peeking. And Sonny has a phenomenal round. Three kills for him, clearing out long, finishing things off. We're heading to a halftime break, and we'll be right back with the conclusion of the series. Welcome back. Final half here of the best of three series between Vitality and Ents of the Corsair Dream Hack Masters. And we're getting right into it. Vitality now on the T side, Ents on the CT side. Vitality might be looking to make short work of this. That first half was incredible. Zaiwu is still playing well. The double ops, even the one on shocks, was having great impact. And Ariel here is going to start things off. Headshot towards top mid. We saw those same peaks coming out from the Vitality side on defense. Still some utility to play with. Mid control in the favor of the French side. Alex waiting in middle. He's just positioned himself there while they're making some noise towards catwalk. They they could just be checking this out to go for the B split, or they could be following through if they if they're really feeling look good with it. Molotov into the site, and they're gonna be falling back. Yeah, this is just a fake, and you maybe not be you may not be expecting a fake like this in a pistol. It's kinda hard to fake in pistol rounds anyway. Sergey pushing right in as they're flashed and, oh, not getting a kill yet. Now they line up for him and that's all he needed. X7 to follow up on that one. The bomb inside of the bomb side and it's a cool finish here for Enz. That's going to be a good start. That's a really hard fake to pull off. There's such a long route to run to that B bomb site. And yeah. those Glocks, not always the, the accuracy you'd like to take the fight against the USPs. Enz to win the pistol, 6-10. to 10. Auto shotgun coming out for Alu. It's like the problem with faking in pistol rounds is that you don't really have anything to like sell the fake with. Yeah. But I guess the other side is m f few people are expecting it, right? Because it's just sort of counterintuitive. Oh, I think he was jumping there, Sonny. Yeah, he was. the grenade. <laughs> that is pretty nasty. He just gets his face taken clean off. Now, thankfully... What on earth? Thankfully, he didn't buy anything. He only had a USP. Yeah, but it's more like the statement of it, isn't it? You're yeah, like, you do feel a little silly. Down the middle, ooh, the auto shotgun, and now it's real good. The Krieg is gone, and he's gonna follow that up. And a team kill. That's a knock on well for Vitality. They do invest in just the one Krieg, that's it. Shocks drop that over. Imagine saying three years ago that Shocks would be dropping a gun for somebody. Yeah, that, it's not even, but, but, but I mean, you can't, <laughs> you can't argue with it, can you? No, you can't. He's just jumping. Not this time. What a, Wow. It is in the second round as well. He's dropping because he has the money for it. So, different scenario, I guess. True. It even looked like actually he had made his way back down the box. That looked like one of those interp kills. No. Old school interp kills. Oh, Zaiwu blind leading the way. Isolated by a Molotov from his teammates, at least for the moment, a follow-up one. And he does not have a smoke to put those flames out. If they spread, he's in trouble. Oh, there's the follow-up Molotov and the follow-up nade. That's one way to handle Zaiwu. Don't even give him a chance to take a fight. Just barrage him with nades. And that gun cannot be recovered. Yeah, bombing him seemed like an effective strategy. Mortars. Luckily, no drones in Counter-Strike, so... There isn't COD. Yeah. I've I've never really been able to understand that. I Maybe it would make more sense if I played it, but... Even some of the court commentators I know say, we're not even sure. <laughs> <laughs> They're great guys, to be honest. It's fun. They are. Car guys are sweet. Yeah. Um, now, round number 18 here. I mean, ends are kind of skirting right on the edge of a comeback. I still think the economy is the thing that's going to make the difference for, for really either team here. When it's this close, and ends the last couple of times they've tried to make comebacks, it's almost failed them on that economic front. On Nuke, they pulled through, and that was great. Oh, Alu, that's the back of the plateau, and he's gone. Sergey has to stay strong, and too many targets in front. He's going to be dropped. They have the bomb, and that smoke should allow them a crossing. 
Mark 7 not connecting. Bomb being planted on the other side. They have a flank as well coming in from Ariel. Alex is going to have a big job to do, but his attention is pulled away at the wrong moment. This flank is going to be so powerful it's in. It doesn't even matter. Alex, oh, what a spin! This is incredible, Alex. So close. Wow. That probably would have been that would have been the ace clutch if he could have done that. That would have been one of the one of the sickest plays of the year. Yeah, I mean it was already really great, but we do need all of it to uh, to fully uh, to give him the credit. Yeah, you that know. was so close. That twist clutch. You remember that from the box? Yeah. Ooh. The follow up here is oh he's flashed in by teammates. This this is great, but that's so, and he's, he even free fires it. Like he has the right idea. If if X7 was committed, that might have that might have done it. That would have really been it, wouldn't it? Oh dear lord, ten to eight. That's pretty sick. Ten to eight. Yeah, you're right. Double up now in play on the end side. So, well, we'll see if Vitality have the chops to get over it because Ents couldn't do that in the first half. Once that double up came out, it was I think what they got maybe maybe one round from when the double up started, maybe oh, yeah. two. It was that it was that mental run towards the end of the half for for Vitality. We'll see. They're going to start it out with a small purchase, small uh, amounts of uh, arsenal. Just CZs, three of them, two deagles as well. I think the, the, the crazy thing is Vitality hasn't yet had a full buy. It's only going to happen in the next round, the fifth round of this half. They, remember, they dropped the, the Krieg over to Zaiwu, which meant in the next round, Shox was missing a rifle. And look at the aggression here from these pistols. Not panning out until just now. The drive-by from RPK. They would have kept going on... Almost looked like they could have ran down Sergei as well. That, by the way, is an Alu classic on this map. Just taking that fight in Lower Dark, we've seen it do so many times. Almost felt like maybe even Vitality were uh, were guessing at that. So still, that's pretty cool. Now, if they could get the rifle, that would have been even more fun. But that did not seem like an option in the middle there. Instead, they're back over at Long. They have some grenades that they could maybe set up. What was that from Alex? I feel like he just flashed his teammates. I didn't see it. I just saw it on the minimap. It just looked like the grenade went just outside of the wall. We've seen some misnades today. Some some interesting ones. Some very interesting ones. Maybe well, they should go for like that glaive man on fire play down the middle. Ooh, Sergey completely blinded. Nice pop flash. And Sergey doesn't know if that's going to be for Catwalker for middle, so he's got to play it cautiously. It's going to deny information as he sinks back into the B bomb site. Two smokes, one flashbang, and a Molotov to get past Sonny. Yeah, but getting past Sonny's usually not that easy. He's got seven kills right now, so definitely not his best game, but still. Gotta be ready. 19 seconds. Oh, and the timing is godlike. They're just right on top of him. Aerial out in the open. No cover, no backup here, and tapping away and landing two great shots. That's really important. If he goes down, they just might have lost the round then, but now they're in good position. RPK expecting a jump, ready for it with a deagle. Nobody's giving it up yet. There's a nice shot. And oh dear, it turns around. X7 in trouble. And that's just the pistols making quick work of that retake. And that is, that's a massive round here for Vitality. It feels like they really needed that. And they, they had the advantages they needed. You mentioned it. Sunny, 7 and 14, just could not find the timing on that. They drop down and they just swing on him so, so fast. Immediate kill from the CZ. And what a turnaround that is. Having to go up against a double op setup and just getting getting battered by it for a round or two, and then just losing to pistols, and now Ents have no money. They got Ariel on the M4, and he's already snuck up the middle. He is on a flanking mission, but Saibu is waiting right on the other side with an AWP. And if you're Ariel, you already got this far, you've got to make a move. Either you need to go back, or you need to move forward. And Alex, oh, walking down behind him, in fact. He's going to be going down, so... Ariel getting what he wanted, and now he can even sneak back. That's not bad at all. No, that's a really cool decision from Ariel. And especially because his teammates had pushed into upper dark, so they had the information. And now everyone, all five players from Ents are here. They can have some very speedy aggression on this retake. Or maybe they just don't let the bomb go down. Three players remaining on Vitality. There's Sunny, there's the M4 on Ariel that falls. And Shox and Zaiwu can do nothing. It's way too much of pressure applied through that smoke. A ninth round for Ents, and they respond in kind. An immediate timeout called by Vitality. Man, Ariel giving his team a lot here. He did it on Nuke as well. That's that's just one play. He gives he gets them that second uh, rifle in the AK-47. 
But just the push up right to the corner, not overextending, ready to take the fight and then falling back as well. That... What a rebuttal. Yeah, that's great. Well, here's the nice thing. Because Vitality won a full round with pistols and they upgraded so many, or they upgraded two weapons, they have the cash. They're going to have another very yeah. strong buy. Zaiwu might get forced off the op. If he wants to go for it, it's glass cannon. Big, big round here for both teams. Yeah, I say go for it if you're, if you're Zaiwu. It's worth it. 18 and 9 on him. So definitely still room... For more. Not seeing anyone in the middle. And a more of a default spread this time for the T side. Not afraid to run into Lord Dark like that. Again, I'd say we've seen Alu even in consecutive rounds pushing to take that fight in Lord Dark, so you've got to be real careful. But I guess maybe Cyber was looking the whole time. Probably was. Default out of vitality. Taking this map control, flashbang at Molotov. RPK just now evacuating Upper Dark. Throws that smoke towards the end of B-Halls. And now they get to readjust. They get to pick and choose who they want. They have enough catwalk control to execute onto the A-bomb site. Or they can fall into a mid to B split, but Sunny looking directly for that. And again, this could just be a posture. Going through the motions of clearing out close mid. So at least forcing Ents to respect a mid to B split. Just a quick peek. I mean, that's pretty effective. It'll force them back behind the smoke. At least they don't know what's happening in the middle. But Alu's here. Oh, and actually, he gets the second player. Looked like that was a bit of a delayed shot. Sunny goes down, and Saiwu will take him down. The glass cannon comes through, and Alu goes down. Ariel still standing over here at long, but the backup is going to be coming through CT spawn. And Apex is holding on one side. And is he going to drop down and go for a flank? That would be kind of huge, but also dangerous. Ariel is down, and Saibu now looking towards him as they swing out. He gets Sergei, and there's the flank from Apex. And that's the round for Vitality, bringing it back. And this time, there's really no money for Enz. It's even worse than it was last time. What a great set piece. Uh, just trading so efficiently into that bomb site. This was beautiful from Zaiwu right over the smoke, the follow-up AWP when he's got position, and Enz could never find a way to get back into that bomb site. So three rounds of trade, or four rounds, I should say, of trading back and forth. And finally, Vitality has taken the money control, the economic control of this game down the stretch. Enz is going to be forced back to pistols, and they're, they're so low in terms of their money. Three players below 2,000. Simple attack towards the B bomb site this time. Shock's leading the way. It's RPK that gets the first kill, and there's the MAC-10. Oh, that was a good call. I mean, yeah, you, you risk potentially not knowing if there's going to be a full stack in the B bomb site, but you have the flashbang. You've got the MAC-10 leading. I think that's that's not bad at all. It wasn't a full commitment off that play, was it? And it wasn't a full commitment. And let's not pretend that it, it can also be a risk going slow if they have a deagle or a scout in play and you, and you start you know slowing your way across the map on yeah. us too you can that can be bad too so yeah i like that idea 13 to 9 now we've got an org and what is this okay um a misbuy perhaps i'm not entirely sure what to classify this as either way you can't restart a round for a misbuy so ens is going to have to do without it Maybe it'll work out. Flashbang is dead on purpose. An RPK has got no chance. Similarly as last time, they get an early kill with a rifle, then they follow it up and steal one and Sergei taking down Apex. I just don't even know what's going on anymore. Sunny going to win this fight as well. And this is very confusing. Okay, Zawu is still alive though with the AWP. Unarmored opponents as well. So that MAC-10 can do some work. Shox needs to decide where exactly he wants to play. He's going to hold on to Catwalk while Zawu gets this plant down but he needs to make his way back, but they're already up. He's gonna have a fight on his hands right now. He must win both, and he's got both. Yeah, pistols out for Saibu, as you can get unarmored targets and headshots coming through, and somehow a 2 on 5 turned into a 1-on-1. -on -one. Sergei oh. making the jump, and Saibu taking him down. That is so outrageous. 24 kills on him. That face says it all. <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, incredible. No armor. I would, I would love to know if that was a miss buy. I mean, if that was a plan, fair play. It worked perfectly. I have to imagine. That just it's feels a like it has to be a miss buy. No armor. Aug. Well, everyone else has pistols. Still putting themselves in a situation where they should have won it. Should have won it. Yeah. The armor. I mean, 
can't really blame them, but... Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe not should have won it, but they had massive advantage in the round, even without the armor. It really felt like it. I mean, even that fight against Shocks, which they almost did a catwalk, that's it already. But then the, the choice even for Slime was saying, you know what? That, that AWP, I'm just going to do it with the pistol instead. Quick decision. Well, here we go. 14 to 9, two rounds more for Vitality, and they make it through in this best of three, which has been anything but easy, to be honest. And to been winning it on this map alone, a lot of a lot of strange rounds. Now we've got double up back on the CT side. Very patient from Vitality. You have Xbox, and that's not patient. Apex is picked off by Alu in mid. I feel like we spent a long time on Dust2 where, we, where teams just did not want to mess with mid from the CT side. It just wasn't worth the battle. And we've come back to it now, which I think is very cool. Slowly returned, not as aggressively as people used to do it way back in the day, where, um, you know, you'd have straight up spawn to spawn fights going on. Yeah, that was but, a good time. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Not so much these days. Sneaking out middle. Looks like it's going to be really fast. But it's going to be almost with no signal. So the question is, can Sunny and Sergey hold off on it? They're actually not even spotting yet. Sunny's fall all the way back. But Sergey's going to close down an entire arm of that push. And he's still getting overrun. And Sunny picks up one kill. Another one would be great. And he's not going to get a chance here. And again, it's Saiwoo and Shocks. They have a Molotov. And even just the fact that Saiwoo's alive, you just know that things can get real freaky. That smoke... A little bit of a flashbang. What a setup. And Saibu taking down Alu. Now the follow-up. Molotov forcing them into two different fights here. Looking the wrong way for a second. He knows that someone could be coming. He definitely knows now. Krieg is on the other side. But oh, he goes back for it. And Shock's waiting inside of the smoke to lose the fight. Saibu still with a headshot. And now Ariel. He's going to dodge the grenade. And he gets the headshot. Taking him down and picking up the kit. And that's going to be the round here. Four ends, barely winging it, that one versus one. And again, I, the, the hard part is it's a great win for Ants. It's a great retake, a hard fought retake, but with only one player surviving, you're, you're again in a situation where if you get reset in this following round, if Vitality get put on 15 and break your economy at the same exact time by winning this next round, oh, are you in some trouble? Oh, are you going to have a bad time? Zaiwu, 26 and 10. 20 and 12 for Shocks. For Ants, it's Sergey and Ariel leading the way at 18 and 17. Good tag onto X7 from Zaiwu. And Alu probably wanted to pull off on that, but he just couldn't. Sunny, though, that's a great return. And Alex instead comes in with a refrag on Ariel. And now there's a lot of trouble. Look at the fast-paced up catwalk as well. Apex and Shocks can actually stop this rotation. Alu, yeah, you can't take that fight. You know they're coming from long as well. Smoke surely to be, to be deployed at one point. So who does have the bomb, so maybe they want to pass that off. Actually, Alex, with, with no HP, does not want to make that cross. Catwalk is going to be the point of a retake. Wow. Shocks with the immediate challenge. Looked like he was actually about to get flanked on Catwalk, but now instead X7 trying to fall back. He's alone. He was tagged already in the beginning of the round, and no chance here. 15 to 10. And Vitality with an incredibly quick call after that first uh, kill, or the first ch that challenge over at Long, yeah. and now 15 to 10. That was a really cool play up, Catwalk. You've got two kills. You know they're playing Long. You know the rotations are going to be coming in by the time you're making your way up the stairs on Catwalk. I really, really like that. And now the, the worst has happened. Yeah. The nightmare. <laughs> yeah. They've won the initial shot. Alex is tagged down to about half HP. So, okay, hoping to shoot through the wall. So far, not going to be lucky to do that. Now they have nearly nothing to work with here. So outlandish watching Saibu do this across three maps, really. I mean, again, just, it's not that it's all on him. I know we talk a lot about that, but obviously this is a full team effort. And some of the calling that's come out of Alex, again, as it has been for a long time, is, in my opinion, absolutely brilliant. He's turned but, out to be a fantastic in-game leader, hasn't he? Yeah, it's, I, it's really something, a real revelation in my opinion. But now, it, like, what do you do when Cyber is playing this way? That's the, that's the problem. Like, any dream or any hope that you have of, of having easy rounds almost immediately just goes away. Alex waiting here, and he's going to be rewarded, and Sergey going to be the one versus four, and yeah, Vitality one round away, one kill away, and Saibu at 26 at the end of this, and 
They could just go somewhere else, or they could go and fight him, and they will. 16 to 10, as Vitality end up winning the series 2 to 1 over Ant. And yeah, the score at the end for Simon will be, I don't know. We end up talking a lot about him, and there's a good reason why. Yeah, uh, and I mean, you know, it, it, you're right. It's not an individual effort out of him, but he is certainly leading the way frequently, and, and that is a scary thing. And if you just have everyone around him, you get another piece that is able to click within this system, that, that makes it even more scary, because you have some support for Zaiwu. Yeah. Uh, but certainly he was the engine tonight. He was phenomenal. 30-some kills on the first map, mid-20s in the second map, mid-20s in the third map. That's, yeah. that's not a bad series in any way. And I think Alex ended at 23 kills while also doing the in-game leading and being a British Counter-Strike player. So all of those things are, um, you know, all combined pretty amazing. We've got the desk with us. So. And when they're combined, Jacob and Stunna and Sponge, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I'd say beauty is uh, really limitless over on these sides. And in the eye of the beholder, so... Uh, yeah, Who you, knows if Jason knows what he's talking about at this we, point? Should we really deem Jason the beholder, though? Jason the beholder. I call him Jason the prophet. Jason, Momo, the prophet. One of my Momo. favorite people. Momo. I love Momo. Anyway, Zaiwu yeah. won the game. He did. Zaiwu wins the game. It's Vitality that wins the game in the third map. They get it done here. It takes them a little while, but don't you worry. We got you covered here at the Corsair DreamHack Masters. Welcome back, everybody. We're just about ready to wrap this party up, but first, we need to tell you about everything that's gone on in this matchup and why Zaiwu has just graced us with his presence. It is kind of scary that the game got so close. Mm -hmm. Despite, you know, Saibu had one of those games where you, you think to yourself, this is the best player in the world. Like, this is a guy that over three maps, he completely dominates the game. He makes sure that he's the best player on the server. He makes sure that he's putting his team in a winning position, yet it still gets down to, you know, does to rather convincingly for Vitality. But the fact that didn't win Nuke after such a performance is, to me, a little bit disappointing. I think Vitality has more to show off. What about Vitality and Shocks? You know what? I'm done with you guys. Let's hear from Shocks direct. Cool, man. Yes, indeed. Let's hear from Shox direct. Shox, am I saying this right? Nous avons fatigué. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah. How has your first day been in the Vitality office? Uh, it was, uh, I mean, a lot of things, I would say, but uh, at the end, uh, really good, and I'm really happy that uh, we made it to the playoff, um, which uh, was uh, definitely uh, our first uh, goal coming up to to, to Dreamhack Malmo, so... Yeah, a bit of a uh, tough situation, I would say, as uh, I'm just here like for one week or stuff like this, and uh, a lot of situation I'm not used to, <laughs> to like just live during the game and stuff like this. So, but it's it just uh, about time. But I'm really happy that uh, we made it to the playoff. Talk to me about adjusting from being a team captain, being an in-game leader, to taking on that solo lurking responsibility on those T sides. Um, well, first, it was one of my role when I started to become like uh, just to be on the top. Uh, but definitely, the, the main thing is like it's been like three or four years. Like I'm just used to to speak a lot, you know, to like make calls and stuff like this. So I just need some time to just uh, get the habit to speak maybe less, to maybe give less proposal or stuff like this because it's just natural for me now to, to speak a lot which can be good but sometimes it can be too much so but it's just about time that I will find the, the right balance uh, in the team. And we saw you speaking a lot during that last timeout. what was it you were saying to the team? Uh, Actually, I don't even remember. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm getting tired, so like... Uh... It's absolutely fine. Don't worry, Shocks. But I do want to ask how you feel the team is going to move going forward. It was a little bit close at times on the team. Alex is also adjusting to calling those CT sides as well. Do you feel positive about your chances here in Malmo? Uh, definitely. I think we we can... I mean, I don't fear anyone. Uh, I think we pretty much can beat anyone, as Alex said in his interview. But yeah, there is like three big names, Liquid, EG and Astoris, uh, who are definitely uh, big, uh, big names. <laughs> I noticed you didn't mention G2 there, Shocks. Ah, yeah, we will see if we face them, though. So I hope they make to the playoffs, that would be, that would be nice. Um, but I think we can do good, but uh, for example, like just in this game, in best of three, there were so many runs, like uh, we, we lost because of mistakes and because of details because I'm not really used to uh, and when you, you play like CS at this level like at the top level like every details uh, really count and this is why you're gonna win or lose the run so 
I just uh, I'm just really hyped to just fix a every single little mistake, you know, so we can definitely be uh, more um, just relaxed and I can definitely f think we can go really high. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. Go and get some rest shocks. We're going to see you in, in a couple of days' time. You've got a day off tomorrow and then we'll see you back here in Malmo. Thank you so much and let's head back to the desk to bring this day to a close, please. If you would like, Frankie, that's what we'll do. We did not know you were fluent in French, but we have learned a lot today, as it would appear. Wait, we can't keep going? We can't keep going. Why don't we you, take over the Tai Lu and Fnatic game that's going on right what? now? You know what? That's what we're going to do. This isn't a real highlight. I'm <laughs> just kidding. This is what we've got going on. We've got some highlights. I'm going to tell you about how the Group A upper bracket semifinal went down and that it was Vitality that came out on top. Notice he didn't say G2. We didn't even say G2, so you can't really blame him there. They're a new roster, right? No one's saying G2 at the moment. I was still relatively impressed with that performance earlier sure. against Astralis. That was pretty good stuff. Someone else who was doing some pretty good stuff, we just touched on it being Zywo. I think he had over that series for the three maps like 85 kills or something ridiculous. So he went ham, and in the later half, or in the second half uh, of Dust 2, Shocks came alive with some moments, right? It's just good to see them both being able to perform and get some multi-kills. We had a round, I think, that they won together where they got both five, uh, five kills between the two of them, so that was nice to see. Let me just cut you off right there, Chad. Of course. I'm gonna let you finish. Yeah. But first, I need to hear from Sergey. Oh. Sergey, are you with us, my friend? Yeah. You, you, you feeling rough over there? Are you okay? Uh, a bit rough, yeah. I feel you, man. Well, you didn't look so bad in the server, but then there's this guy on the other side who went like plus 40, Zywu. That's pretty nuts. Yeah, he's nuts. Okay, well, take it away, Chad. Yeah, so um, what are you guys going to do? You're going to go have a nice sleep, I guess? Uh, yeah, we are a bit of uh, tired still from jet lag, I think. Uh, so take a good rest and eat and prepare for tomorrow. So no karaoke? No. All right, I'm not going to hit the bar or anything like that. Uh, how's Sunny fitting in? Uh, good. We still have things to do, but good. In terms of having Alu as an in-game leader, can you maybe explain what the biggest difference between him and Alexi B is? Uh, I think uh, right now we get more variety calls. Um, we need to adapt to it. Uh, I don't think we are that ready for it yet, but maybe more variety, yeah. So should we let him sleep? I, I think we like should so. let you sleep, Sergey. You know what, man? Sergey is completely fine. Anything you want to say in Finnish, though, because I feel like that's your, your real talking point. Not really. <laughs> All I right, respect that, sick. man. Thank you. Straight Go up. to bed, dude. We'll see you tomorrow. Later, dude. Thank you. All right. Well, got that out I of the way. I respect that. Yeah, I mean... We man, get paid to speak. He gets paid to play, so... He doesn't have a lot to say, and I understand it. Yeah. You just lost. Zaiwu just pretty much trounced on your team 85 to 45 KD. Yeah. What? You... What, mate? You said that you can't win by just having Saivo in your lineup. No, you said that. <laughs> you said that. Well, maybe we both said that. Maybe we did. Maybe you did. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. I just wanted to call you out. Well, to, to be fair, you can't win the whole tournament with only <laughs> you, you can't look at this and say, like, oh, this is normal. This is what you see every day. 95.5 ADR. Oh, my God. That, that's over, ladies and gentlemen, that's over three maps. Like, that, it's that, insanity. That's over, yes. th that's over three maps. He's, he's been able to maintain almost a, a hundred ADR, which reflects as one kill per round over three maps, and they lost the map. It's, uh, it's special, isn't it? It's a special one. It's yeah. absolutely insane. I mean, th there's a reason he's up in the conversation for being the best player in the world, and I think it's still a, a conversation that can be had. We had it during Cologne, I believe, where I think I said that I believe at the current time I, I felt he was the best player in the world. If he keeps this up, I, I want to see Symbol, you know, in prime in order to even compete with this. John's this the best player in the world. Go home. Oh, well, I, I, you guys are obviously fatigued, but um, what we will do now is take a look at today's results. Yes! So that we can get ever so much closer to the end result of what I'm getting to in this series. Is this the brackets? Oh, oh okay. Close. No, it's it's actually close. just like straight up results. What you will notice is that Fnatic and Tyloo is still going on, still going strong over on the Third secondary map right stream, now. the B stream. Dust 2, you're right, Chad. It's currently 2-0 for Tyloo. Just quickly, I want to point this out. In There should be no world where Tyloo in a veto is gifted Inferno, Mirage, and Dust 2. Like, you would have to... Act, that's that's like the maps they get to play in China. So. This doesn't make any sense. Obviously, Fnatic with the with the reintroduction of Flusher and Golden, they're probably maps which they lean to a bit more free flowing, sure. uh, puggy style maps. But that also plays into the wheelhouse of Tyloo, and thus we can imagine this one is going to go the distance. Speaking of the distance, speaking of speed, we're going to continue to speed towards what is our top five plays of the day. I want energy. Oof. Give me a little bit of hype, a little bit of something in the Twitch chat. All your hype here it is right now. Ins versus Vitality. Zywu wielding the AWP, and we're going to see him take it out. One, take down two. Looks for a third. 
And he can't do it by himself. Notice his teammates are there, but Zywoo really did it for his team here on both maps, all three maps. He did it really. close, yeah. This was a, it was a big round for them on Inferno. Then we had JW. He had a great game on that Mirage. This is the 4K with the AWP, and he showed why he is such a skilled player. We see his awareness, we see him being quick on the trigger, and that's JW Classic right there. We need to see more of that if they are to survive against Tai Lu. Yes, Tai Lu, who is still battling to stay alive. Number three. Magus here, and this is a very important round. He has a three-piece Deagle, grabs the first, he's gonna find the second and spins oh, for the God. third there. You don't see that every day of the week. You know, Only you plays like Guardian can pull that out. Guardian. Guardian, turning it around now, spinning it on ahead. Speaking of Guardian, we're not quite there, but we do have Kerrigan on Inferno with an ace. This guy was really highlighted. I think Christine pulled it out earlier and was talking about how he pushes through, really takes that Opens leadership role space, into effect. Yeah. That was a very good round from Kerrigan there, leading by example. Unfortunately, the rest of the mouse sports, well, and Rops was the getting activated, but everyone else was a little bit slow today. Well, let's run it back on the same map. I think it's about time we switch it on down to at least number one. You I want mean, the beans Kerrigan's here? cool, but yeah, give it to me. This one here is a Lecro one on three situation here with the AK. He's actually going to pick up the 4K, and as we can see, pushing in, the bomb's being planted. The bomb, the defuse is coming in, but Lecro, he does it with time to spare. Oh. And we'll get it again. We get a second replay, so you can see this happen one more time. But Lecro plans to find the yeah. No, I can't, man. I'm <laughs> bad. out of breath. I am out of breath. <laughs> oh. But yeah, that was the top five plays of the day. That is your top five plays of the day, and this day has come to an end. I would like you to say something eloquent and pretty right now. Jacob, just to just kind of tie this day to a close. Yeah, I think it's been a fun day of Counter-Strike, Trace, and I think you've been, uh, I mean, I survived with you, and I think that's the best I can do. Let's get these baby sharks out of here. Yeah, baby, baby shark, sharks, baby shark. Man, yeah, man. that's, that's yeah, beautiful. Okay, now nah, nah, we can do it. Can that was good. That was nah, 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 copyright, we're going to get striked. Okay, well, here's what we will do. <laughs> I will think Corsair, I will think Monster Energy, I will think esport-management.com, also cs.money and gg.bet for all making very much the DreamHack Masters very much possible. So, without any further ado, I'm actually going to lay my head down on a pillow, have a Great sleep. Come back tomorrow. I'm going to be recharged just like you should be when we tie into some best of threes. That's right, three of them just for you, just for me. So make sure you're with us when we come back tomorrow. You're watching the Corsair Dreamhack Masters. Maybe shut up.